Okay, I'll be talking about outscaling applications and more specific with Amazon AWS. So, first thing, what do you need to 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 use? Like, what do you need, we have for for to do that? So, uh, AWS account that is Amazon Web Service account. The Amazon Ops Works. This is their tools. So everything is web based. Uh, Chef cookbooks and your app and some money to pay the servers, of course, and some patience. So, because sometimes the servers take a little while to, to load. Um, so sometimes AWS is Amazon Web Service. Um, it's from Amazon.com, but like they provide web services. I don't know. Uh, EC2 is basically like the VM is you get like root access to the box and do whatever you want. Uh, ELB is is from Amazon, is a load balancer, is based on HA proxy. And RDS is the Amazon relation, the relational database service. So they provide the database as a service. So they have like MySQL, they have Postgres, they have Oracle, they have some orders. And so you can just, you, you don't need to install anything. You just go in the web interface, create a new, say, I want a MySQL box. This is the version I want for MySQL. It's like 5.5, five, 5.6. Five, and they, they do everything else. Like they do backups, they do snapshots, whatever. Um, so some, I start with some architectural evolution to get on the outloading, outscaling, sorry. And the first thing you start is you have the internet and you have one box. Sometimes it's just like a share the host. Sometimes you can just start a EC2 directly, something. And then you put everything like DNS, MySQL, or any database, the Apache, the PHP, the main cache, everything you put in just one box. So when you s your site or your app start to get more access and access and access, that box cannot handle everything. So what you do, you scale vertically. So we get a better server with more CPU, more memory, more some, more disk or network. And then after that, you what do you what you can do? So you go and you separate the database. So all like the load for the database, all the the cache, all the memory for the cache, and all the disk you need goes to a different server. So in this case, it could be like a RDS or it could be like another EC2 with just MySQL. So we have two separate servers. And this you reduce like all the load between your servers, so we split in two, basically. Next point, the next part, you need to, like, you get more instance for your load. So instead of your Apache handle all the, the users, you split splitting different servers. So doing that, it's require a load balancer. Uh, that is the icon before. So that load balancer, you get a request, and okay, like 50% goes to one server, 50% goes to another server. So doing that, like produce the load in the server. The the load balancer pr usually don't have a lot of load. And Amazon also provides the load balancer. And you keep with your MySQL. In the future, you can like scale MySQL as well, like having replicas or reading data from replicas so you can rescale MySQL as well. But I'm not trying to get this point today. I'm talking more about the application side, so the web servers. So um, that way. After that, you like you have two boxes, and you can start to have more and more boxes. But everything is manual, so we can have like three boxes. But like for example, most of the websites they have traffic during the day and the night. You don't have anything. So what do you do? You scale up during the day. You put servers, and then at night you go and remove servers, and not pay the, those servers. <laughs> or for example, you have uh, some day you have some promotion or something. You go in that day and you put like more five servers, but after that day you can remove. But everything you need to go in the interface and say, I want more servers. 
And if, if you forget that, you'll be paying that server. At the end of the month, you'll be very bad. So to solve all this problem, you can outscale. So we still have the load balancer, but you have some load uh, outscaling like logic to scale your servers for you. So it can be based by time, based by, um, by load, by memory, CPU, if something is, is bad, or, and you can have um, like a minimal number of servers running all time. And so this is why OpsWorks help you. They, they create one tool. So basically what is OpsWorks? It's a free tool from Amazon. They give you a web interface, you set up everything, and you don't need to connect in any SSH, you don't need to do anything in console to get one environment running. So they have very simple interface. I'll be showing you how the interface. Very easy to set up as well. It's like a wizard, like you step by step, you'll be setting all the configs. And it's pretty much for DevOps, but anyone can do it. It's really, really simple. So what is necessary is the Amazon account, of course. Um, <laughs> The application, you need to put in some like Git or SVN repo. You need to create the Chef cookbooks. This is how we'll be configuring your app. Like if your app is so simple and you have all the configs in your repo, you don't need to do anything like extra. You don't need to create Chef cookbooks custom. You, Amazon provides some custom uh, some cookbooks, so they you can use that. And you have also to put the cookbooks in a repo. Um, all the cookbooks and your app don't need to be public. You can have like a private Git or a GitHub private account and put everything there and you just use the private key. You can use that on, on Amazon. So Amazon, right now they are supporting, recently they support the Chef, the 11.4. That is one of the most recent versions. And so Chef cookbook is not that complicated. Seems like weird, I need to learn a new language or a new thing. It's in Ruby, but it's not like the end of the world. Like Yandu, Yandu showed yesterday, so a little bit about Vagrant and Vagrant used like Chef to set up everything. And this is one example. It's basically like they show here, when you're deploying for the application, I use like Apache, so what I'll be doing here, a change PHP configuration. I say run this command, and then this change configuration, and as user root, so I don't need to put like sudo here, it's run automatically. And in the end, as you change a PHP configuration, you need like to reload Apache. So I not file reload for the service Apache 2, and then it can be delayed. This delayed means if a lot of cookbooks needs to restart Apache, um, in the end of all the setup, they restart once, not for every cookbook. So it's kind of save a little time, it's not restart all the time. Um, and Ops works dividing some components. So the first component is the stack. The stack is basically what you have in production, what you have in staging, or some like different completed stacks for applications. So you divide on that. Then you divide in layers. In inside each stack you have layers. So each layer is basically your PHP apps or your load balancers or your database or some Rails app or any other kind of app you have. Like if you have multiple, multiple applications on the same stack, both will be in the same layer because they are both on PHP app. Um, the instance are the servers, the EC2s. So it's the machine. And application is application. And you can use multiple applications for and the same stack. So I'll be showing here a little step by step you know, ops works. So the first thing I'm using Krogo to demonstrate that. And I get the GitHub account for Krogo. 
is the Krogu Krogu. I'm using the tag V153. And I created a very simple cookbook. Don't copy that because the code is very bad there. And like a lot of people has better cookbooks. I know the little Jose has a lot of cookbooks on his GitHub account. So we can. And so first, like in my cookbook, I create cake PHP setup. So every time you start like a new VM, I do some setup that is install the cake PHP with the peer package. I do a configure that is change the time zone, the default time zone, because by default PHP came commented out. So I change to be UTC. And when I deploy, I also change config just to make sure. And install Krogo that is require some configurations. And I create a RDS and a load balancer beforehand because when you start your VM, you need to have like a all your database set up because I'm not for each server creating the database, set up in all the database. So I just set up database once. Like you can just start in one EC2 manually, um, install Krogo by the wizard, that's simple. And then database will be created. So I just get like, the, I did that. I exported the, the SQL and I, will, I just need to reimport any server. And the load balancer also need to be beforehand because the ops works. They have interface to select what load balancer you want, but not to create one. Um, so I import the data in, in the RDS, the database. And the sessions, as you have multiple servers, I'm putting database. I could use like Redis, main cache, or even stick sessions, but I'm simplified to use database as well. So the first thing, create load balancer in Amazon is pretty simple. You just go, you have this create load balancer. They ask you like two, three things. It's very simple, like what ports you want, what what's the URL to monitor, like the health check. And it's just create one, it's basic one. And also create a database is basically they have the button launch DB instance and then you set up what's PHP, uh, what's MySQL version you want. And if you want to move to AZ, that they replicate. And what's the size of the box and capacity and everything, you, you do that. I'm very cheap, I, I choose the micro. That is very slow. And this is the first contact with OpsWorks. <coughs> so basically, they do, you add a stack, so when you are creating a stack, this is the first part, you give a name. It doesn't matter what the name is for you. And you choose what's the region and default of a village zone. It's up to you. And they have just two options for uh, operation system right now. They have the Amazon Linux and Ubuntu. So Amazon Linux is kind of CentOS. It's a little custom for Amazon. And and the other fi the other part is more like security and how we'll be doing that. And in the advanced part, that is the like the text right on the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but is there if you click is that part, and you choose what's the chef version, and you can use custom cookbooks. So in this case, I'm using to set up every set up cake to set up Krogo time zone and stuff. So I. Just put my GitHub, my GitHub repository there, and if it's a private, I can put the SSH key, and also the branch version you can use, and this is the custom configuration. So I'm set up in the database here, so every time I deploy a server, it's they get that information to use. Uh, after create the stack, I'm creating the PHP layer. So I'm adding a layer, I choose uh, PHP app server, and I created the, the load balancer beforehand, so I have I have an option to select the load balancer. The load balancer needs to be in the same uh, region from from your from your stack. I put it here. So it's the same region. You choose here. Um, 
Okay, so before you set up the instance, you don't have anything. They just show you have PHP server layer, but you don't have any instance. So we go and create an instance. It's basically you give a host name, could be whatever you want. The size of the box, like I'm cheap, I use mic micro. And the availability zones will be just the AZ inside that region. So it will be A, B, C, D. And you have three types of the scaling type. You have 24 per 7, that's, that server is running all the time, never go down and up. And time-based, you select for each server what time they will be running. And the load base, it, it's like, for example, if your CPU get over like 50% during five minutes, you start a new box. Or if your memory is like almost full, you can start a new box too. So you can split the servers. And SSH key is what's the key for connecting the box, the SSH. And you can choose the operation system in 64. The instance store is disabled here because I choose micro. Like micro do not support instance store. But if you choose a different different type, they can they can do it. So here I'm showing I create just one 24 per seven because probably everybody needs at least one 24 per seven. So it's created. It by default it's stopping, but they have options to start or delete. So you just click start and they start to boot and run all your chef client and do everything. So here I create more instance. I create, so here I have time basin. I have two box time basin and three load basin instance. So I cannot start those box because they are time and load basin. So I cannot do manually adds. If I want a new box right now, I need to create a 24 per seven. Here is how you set up the time basin instance. It's kind of very, very simple. They show all the two instances. Uh, there is the two instances I created as time basin. And this is time UTC. And this little thing is helps to show the current time. So this was the current time when I took the pitch screen. And here is the load balancer. You can enable, disable, and for example, this, I will be scaling one extra server when the CPU is like over 80% during five minutes. And then this will be scaling down when the CPU is 30% during 10 minutes. It's pretty very, very easy to set up. So here you create the application after you create the instance. So creating the, the application, you just give a name, you put it, that is a PHP, you give the repo, you can also use the private key for, for download the repo, and what's the version? Like this is the tag, but you know, get and use the same thing for branching tags. And like you can see here, but you can set up also what's the domain for your app. But usually you don't need it if you have just one app. So here is the application created. You can deploy from here. So if you have like a new version, you don't need to change all your instance. You just go deploy, change your branch version, and then it's done. They start to deploy everything with your chef cookbooks. And they also have like a monitoring servers. So they show by the layer, they have a layer here. And they show like all the CPU, memory, load, and process. So we have more servers, they'll be showing everything here. And here I get, like after I start everything, set up everything, I start to do a lot of requests to my server. And then it's automatically trigger a load based. So automatically they do a request and start all the box. The first load, it's very, very slow. It's like they take, because Amazon instance, you need to like request and they boot and then you need to run the chef cookbooks. And usually the chef cookbooks, they load, they do, like they need to update all the package, they need to do everything you need to get the server done. So this is pretty good. 
I'll be showing here some This is live. This is one I created just for for Krogo. Like I, I have a Krogo cake fast here. So when you click, you have oh I have seven instances. Three are online. One are going down, and three are stopping. So this is one full interface you have. This is my layers, and because the resolution I can we can see, but they have like one left menu that you can easily access all the layers and configurations. Um, and I can click here, so I see my instance. And I have all this, those instances, and I have just my 24 per 7. Like, I have three boxes running right now. And I have two time bases, but it's not loading right now, and to load as well. So I can have different size for each box. For example, I have all these micro and one medium. So for example, if you're having production, you can have like mediums running all the time. And when you get like a lot of traffic, you can maybe be a very big box to handle very quickly. Or a micro box to get very slow, like handling the traffic. Because you probably you're not gonna have a big spike, it's just a little bit. You can get a micro instance. Just to help a little bit. And you can stop, you can SSH directly from web, but I didn't have to do anything SSH or console for anything here. I just created the instance here. I create the app. Let me see. I create the app here. If you go in the app, you have all the config. I didn't set up any domain, so it's gonna be listening for everything you request to the server, you'll be getting that. And here is my oh here is my time base. Oh, it's just missing. It's, they turn off a little, a little bit. And this is the load. And here is the monitoring. I have now my servers are running for more time. You can see more things. And here on the layers, I just have a PHP layer. If Shows. Okay, and I use one load balancer. They have three running. I can see this is DNS, so if I access here, I get my app. So I can create like a DNS for a C name, so I can get a like nicer name. Usually, if you're using like Amazon, probably need like to get a, a IP for your load balancer to avoid this DNS issues. Because sometimes Amazon do not kill your ELB, but they change your their the host name, so it's good to have a uh, IP for them. So I can refresh, refresh, and it's probably going to a different servers. Like I have three servers, and it's going to a different servers. And you can have like multiple apps. You can add more apps here, and you can say this servers you'll be using app A. And the other servers you'll be using app B. You can specify each one. And then when you deploy the deployment, just go for those box. You can have multiple applications on the same box as well. So it's pretty it's pretty like handful. Like I know the Microsoft did show yesterday about how to do it in Azuri. It's kind of the same, but in here you can use Chef. I couldn't see yesterday how you set up like all the configurations for different boxes or this kind of thing. I don't know how to do that. I'm not a big expert in Azuri. And so but I guess you can do similar there, but some limitations. Like Google also has a, a Google App Engine. They recently released it for PHP support, but they have also a, a lot of limitations. So you can't do a lot of things. But it's very easy to outscale with different like the providers. You can use Amazon, you can use Google, you can use Azuri. I don't know if Rackspace has, but I don't think so. But you can do that in many other providers very quickly and easy. So 
That's it. Someone has questions? Sure. Did you use Opsworks for your, for Zumba? Uh, okay, the question was if in Zumba we use Opsworks. The answer is no, because we use Chef as well. We have like an old deployment school. And at that point, like Opsworks is kind of a recent thing. They released this year. And until like, I guess last month, they didn't have support for like Chef uh, 11.4. And also they don't do VPCs very well. Oh, sorry, VP, yeah, VPCs. So they have just the default VPC, that's one VPC for all your uh, like account. So in Zumba we have more VPCs to separate and more secure between the servers. So we cannot switch for them, but if, when it's possible probably we'll be doing something. Sure. And can you use Vagrant with Opsworks? Um, probably you can reuse the same chef, but Vagrant is more local. Like you cannot deploy from Vagrant to Amazon directly. Like it's kind of different. But you can use the same chef. The same chef you configure your Vagrant local, you can use the same chef on, on Amazon. Probably if you like create different, like different cookbooks, you can use some cookbooks in your Vagrant and some cookbooks just for Amazon. Well, I can show you here. I forgot to show that part. Is when you have the layer. Here is the cookbooks you want to run on Amazon. So we can, when you deploy and shut down servers, you can also set up something else. So we can have the same cookbooks. I have another question that someone else says. Sure. Um, if you were going to run like a staging server and a production server, how mm -hmm. would you set it up in terms of instances and, and layers? Right. Uh, if you go here in the dashboard, like they say one stack is one like production or I'll just I'll be talking the microphone about the question. If one set up like production or staging, how you set up in ops works. Basically. So here this is I just have one, but if you have like I can have like Krugel, Cake Fest production and I can go in actions, like after set up the production or the staging, I can go and clone. So they clone all your configuration on everything you want to do, and then you have different servers to run your staging environment. And that would create, so in your instance, that would make seven new instances? Uh, yes. Instances? Yeah, but you can make different number of instances between staging and production. More, sure. Mm -hmm. What happens in a case where you have apps that store files, like user uploaded files locally, or are you forced to then store load them to cloud uh, uh, storage, or, or is there shared uh, data storage between the instances? Probably in that case, probably you need to store in a central point. Usually in Amazon solutions, they, rec like they recommend to use the S3. <coughs> so when you have like an upload, it goes to your app, and your app transmit it to S3. And then all the servers can use the same place. Someone else? So I guess that's it. Thank you. Nice.